Good morning, and thanks for the opportunity to present our work here today. We have no disclosures. So we all know that the cost of healthcare in the United States has been rising essentially since 1961, and most recently uh, in 2016, the annual expenditures exceeded $3 billion. Um, operating room costs comprise a significant portion of the cost output in this country, and disposable instruments alone are estimated to contribute about 17 to 50 percent of any individual hospitalization. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy is the most common procedure performed by general surgeons now, with over 900,000 performed annually in this country. Um, it amounts to about $5 billion in spending, and so while the cost of an individual cholecystectomy is low, the sheer volume creates an opportunity for cost consolidation. Our study was a retrospective review of a regional health system. We looked at disposable instrument costs in laparoscopic cholecystectomies. We excluded any cases where there was another procedure performed or cases that were converted to open. We identified 7,600 cases. They were performed at 20 different hospitals by 200 uh, or more uh, surgeons. We compared sites to each other uh, because there are certain trends that happen at various hospitals based on what their ordering habits are. Um, and so we then ranked those centers from A to T with low cost centers being ranked A, B, and C and the highest cost centers being ranked um, S and T. So when we compared the hospitals to each other, the average case cost within each hospital was averaged um, and the case costs ranged from 296 to $659. Most hospitals fell in the $400 to $500 range per case for disposable instrumentation. The case durations ranged from 46 to 94 minutes, and the percentage of cases that were performed at an emergency, uh, as an emergency, ranged from 7 to 64 percent, with an overall regional average of about 30 percent. So we compared cost to case duration. And you can see there was a very slight trend towards increased cost with increased case duration, but that line has a very poor correlation um, to the data points there. Um, it's important to note that four centers in our region have residents scrubbed for every case, and those centers on average had a longer operative time of about 15 minutes. Uh, that being said, you can see that actually the lowest cost center um, is uh, one of the hospitals, so we did not see a significant increase in cost usage based on whether residents were scrubbed in the case. Next, we looked at cost versus case volume, and again, there was a very slight trend towards increased cost with decreased case volume, but the line of fit was very uh, poorly correlated. And lastly, we looked at cost versus emergency surgery rate. Um, and you can see there's a slight trend upward, as would be expected, that emergent cases might cost a little bit more. However, it's interesting to note that even while the highest rate of emergency surgery was the highest cost center, the third highest rate of emergency surgery was the lowest cost center, suggesting that there's really no direct correlation between these two variables. The patient demographics were pretty similar across our region. Uh, about 65% of the patients were female. The average age was right around 50. Um, and the body mass index averaged around 30. Uh, we didn't see any significant difference. If you remember, these uh, ho hospitals are ranked from A to T, the lowest cost center being on the left side of the graph and the highest cost center being on the right side of the graph. Comorbidities um, had a higher rate of variation, but they did not have a trend um, for high to low cost. Uh, the highest uh, comorbidity rates were hypertension, diabetes, and smoking. So looking at the cost evaluation itself, we looked at disposable instrument costs that came from our regional cost database. Um, that database categorizes instruments into various categories, and using those categories in which centers had high and low cost averages in each category, we were able to identify high cost instruments and low cost alternatives. So this is the chart showing every center and their average costs in each category. And if a center had an average cost in a category that was greater than 20% of the overall regional average, they were then pulled out as a high cost center. So to simplify it, to compare the lowest cost center and the highest cost center, cost center A uh, only had one area in which they were 20% above the average. And the highest cost center, T, had four categories in which they were higher uh, than the average. Using those categories, we then identified the nine highest cost items um, with the highest usage. So these are the nine items that we think had the highest contribution to the increase in cost. Disposable trocars, disposable clip appliers, suction irrigator, endo shears, hook, P, 
peanut, a PDS endo loop, um, the hover mat, and then the Carter Thompson skin closure device. I'm uh, sorry, uh, fascial closure device. So this is the usage of high cost of those nine high cost instruments at the highest and lowest cost centers. Um, and one of the things I found the most interesting actually was that even the lowest cost centers had a high percent usage at some of the highest cost items. So centers B and C still have a very high cost usage, a high usage of trocars and disposable clip appliers. But um, because you can see that they don't have the highest cost, um, uh, the highest usage of the other instruments, they were still in the lowest cost centers. These are the remaining four items, and you can see that there's definitely a trend towards uh, more use at the higher cost centers. So we then compared every center um, that was using high cost disposable instruments, and we tried to find the centers that were low cost in each category and see what they were using. And so these are the low cost alternatives to each of those nine items. And most of them involve reusable instruments. So reusable trocars, um, a reusable clip applier, and then just using a, a rack of five clips and how um, significant the cost decrease is there from about you know, 80 to 180 to six to eight dollars. Now, we recognize that there is a non-zero cost of using reusable instruments. There's a purchasing cost, there's a processing cost therein. We did not evaluate those for this particular study, um, but other studies have estimated that the cost of sterile processing for any given case is around $30, and that would include all reusable instruments for that case. Um, so you could summarize an additional $30 uh, for every case where you were using additional reusable instruments. So overall, looking at this, we found that if centers converted over to using reusable instruments, that they could get about a $200 to $300 savings, which sounds pretty meager overall, but in our health system, if every laparoscopic cholecystectomy was, was $300 cheaper, we could save $1.3 million just in our health system. And if you translate that over to all laparoscopic cholecystectomies in the nation, you could estimate a savings of about $285 million a year. So uh, lastly, we looked at cost compared to outcome. We used NISQIP data, uh, and we looked at perioperative outcomes and complications. So again, the lowest cost center is on the left, the highest cost center is on the right. Um, there was a high variation in the rate of outcome, in the various outcomes. Um, just as a reminder, these three centers are the highest rate of emergency surgery. Um, so while I couldn't graph multiple things on a single graph at a time, um, you can tell that the rate of readmissions and the duration of hospital stay didn't appear to be related to that necessarily either. Um, but there was no significant trend towards an increase in readmissions or reoperations in centers that used more reusable instruments, which are the centers um, towards the left of the graph. And lastly, we looked at postoperative complications. The overall complication rate for lap coli is low, um, so most complications had an overall average rate of less than 2%. Um, these are the four most common, um, and you can even see that many centers had a, set, had a rate of zero for the data set that we looked at. Um, but overall, there was a little bit of variation going from low-cost centers to high-cost centers, but there overall was no trend uh, in the rate of infections, uh, post-operative sepsis, or the rate of transfusions. So in summary, replacing high-cost instruments with low-cost alternatives can result in a significant cost savings. Low-cost items do not increase the operative time or affect patient outcomes, and we recommend that every hospital initiate a cost evaluation in their center in an effort to decrease the overall uh, cost of high-volume cases like the laparoscopic cholecystectomy. I'd like to thank my co-authors, and I'm happy to take any questions.